perhaps the hardest parenting moments, or some of them anyway, are when our child makes a choice that goes against expectation. Our first instinct when that happens can be to double down on the control, right? But my next guest says that desire to control your kid comes from a place of fear. And those fears can gain anxiety-inducing momentum if you're not careful. Parenting mentor Kristen Duke is joining me to explain. Kristen, long time no chat. How are you, friends? Hello, I'm so great. So fun to chat with you again. I'm excited to have your voice part of our show today and, and, and lending it toward a really important issue and one that I can see would trip parents up often and easily. You say, though, that having expectations in the first place isn't the issue, that expectations are okay. Yes, of course. Our kids need to have boundaries. They feel safer with boundaries, but they're going to push them. You got to expect them to push them. And it's how you respond when they push that makes a big difference. And elaborate, if you will, on this idea that the desire to control our kids stems from fear. What are your thoughts around that? so much fear involved in parenting. I think fear that our child's going to make some major mistakes and that it's going to be detrimental to their life. We're fearful of judgments. We're fearful of the relationship that we have from them. So there's so much fear that I think a lot of parents think, oh, well, if I can tighten up the grip, mm -hmm. control things the way that it's supposed to mm -hmm. be, then it'll be better. And it just makes everything more difficult and complicated. Okay, let's go to that moment where we've taught them well. We know we have, and we know they know better, but yet they choose A, B, C, X, Y, Z. They let us down. You say the first thing to remember is to avoid the lecture. Right. They know. They know when they've made a mistake. They know when they've messed up. The lecture doesn't do anything. My favorite thing to think about is to get curious, not furious. It's one of my favorite taglines. And by getting curious, you're asking questions. You're saying, help me understand instead of, I can't believe you did this. What were you thinking? You know, there's two different yeah. ways of responding. So curious, not furious. Am I expressing disappointment up front though? I think it's, you know, the phrase I'm disappointed in you is just really shame inducing. And so I think they know, like I said, they already know you're disappointed. They can probably see it by the look on your face. Mm. And so I think it's definitely okay to say, you know, I, I know you know better and let's talk about what happened and what you can do better next time. Next step you say is to leverage a compromise. What does this look like? Yes. Yeah. So compromise is, you know, they're over here, you're over here. Talk through until you can come to a place of understanding. And maybe that doesn't necessarily mean that you're stretching or they're stretching, but you're coming to a common place. You know, it's one of the biggest boundaries that's pushed, let's just say, for teenagers is curfew. They really just want to stay out as long as they want and they don't understand. And I think just having the conversation and, and, and being willing to be flexible where it really doesn't matter that much and helping them to see you know, I can bend a little and I want you to know why this is the way it is. And instead of just slapping on mm -hmm. an expectation or rule, help them understand why it mm -hmm. is that you have it. It certainly feels like a more calm way to parent. I think also we're sort of seeing this movement, or at least I am in this chair listening to experts like yourself, that we're, we're trying to treat these little people more like little humans, right? Than, than as yes. puppets that we're, <laughs> that we're pulling the strings on. Absolutely. I mean, teenagers, I, they're pre-adults. I think in our, a lot of times they're as big as we are. My kids are all taller than me. My teens are my 13 year old is taller than me. And so it's hard to look at them and to not, to not think they know better because they're still developing. They're still sure. learning and growing. And I sure. think offering grace through everything and, and recognizing they're still learning and growing. Okay. Uh, mental mantra. We're going to let them make mistakes. Let them make mistakes. You say there's not always a need for a punishment or discipline attached to a dropped ball like this. Yeah. I, I think many parents think that they're going to lose control, which, you know, we already discussed. It's okay to not have all the control mm -hmm. if they don't slap on a punishment. And I just really believe in offering grace. There's so much research that talks about the importance of them learning from mistakes. And at the same time, we don't want them to make mistakes. And when they do make mistakes, we want them to yeah. learn from their mistakes. So, Kristen, I've, so, I've got a quick 30 seconds. You have a three strike policy instead of a punishment. Yes. Will you describe that for us? Really, I just say, give them grace three times. And then if you really want to have a consequence, discuss it after that and help okay. them to know I want you to make mistakes. I want you to learn from it, but you're not always going to be punished for them. Okay. And finally, don't ask too many questions. I'm so guilty of this. <laughs> you know, they just feel bombarded. They just feel yeah. overwhelmed. And so just keep it simple. Yeah.
I love it. Kristen, great topic, great perspective for us to think on as parents as we approach this in our own homes and relationships. Where can we get more advice from you? I am online at Kristen Duke Checks on Instagram or kristenduke.com and I've got some freebies people can have there. Nice. Kristen Duke Chats will link you from our website for an easy connection point. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Awesome. Thanks.